ICFIS Theater Productions presents Sherlock Holmes in The Case of the Missing Body. Written and directed by Martin Smith. Brought to you by Joshua Wall and the Crew Real Estate. Are you or someone you know considering buying or investing in real estate? If so, better call Wall. It is another cool, wet evening on Baker Street. Let us once again drop in to visit our good friend, Dr. Watson, who has just returned from an extended holiday at sea. Uh, um, come in, come in. Dr. Watson, how are you? Good evening. Um, please, uh, please, uh, do come in. Find yourself a chair. Thank you. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. Um, well, yes, but... Uh, it might help me to clear my head. Is everything all right? I'm looking for my notes. Notes? From your vacation? Yes, yes. Uh, I must work on assembling my thoughts after what has happened. Well, it must have been rather disturbing, Dr. Watson. You don't seem yourself. Indeed, I am not. And after what I tell you, you will agree. This is a disturbing tale that will go down as one of our most unforgettable. Is there anything I can do to help, Doctor? Well, Perhaps. Perhaps perhaps it is best if we sit with a drink. It might be a very welcome tonic. Allow me to do the pouring, Doctor. Please, sit down. Oh, thank you, my good fellow. I'm still coming to terms with what unfurled during our time at sea. Here you are, Doctor. <sighs> Please, take your time. Well, um, Sherlock Holmes and I had boarded the ship, the Augusta Victoria and had enjoyed a few days cruising the Mediterranean. The weather had been splendid, and the seas calm. I was on deck working on my journals, and Holmes was enjoying a few moments of respite in our cabin. Suddenly, there was an unexpected knock at the door. Oh, bother. Just a moment. Sherlock Holmes? Please, I need to speak to you. Now, who is it? My name is Helena Mori. I simply must talk to you. Good evening. How may I help you? May I come in? It is vitally important. Our quarters are small, but please have a seat. Now, Miss Mori, how can I be of assistance? I apologize for the intrusion. I heard you were on the ship, and having heard of your escapades, I was planning on introducing myself on the deck, or perhaps in the dining area. I am a great fan. However, meeting you has become more urgent with what has transpired. And what is it that has transpired? You are going to think I am crazy. I I wonder that myself. Please, tell me what has happened. It is too surreal. I, I am simply beside myself. Uh, Miss Morey, I understand you are upset, but I cannot help you if you do not tell me what has occurred. Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh yes. I, I, I am sorry, Mr. Holmes. About an hour ago, I returned to my cabin after a lovely stroll on deck. I opened my cabin door and, and, to my great shock and surprise, discovered the body of a man on the floor beside my writing desk. I screamed in terror and immediately ran to find help. The hallways on the lower deck are like a maze and I became disoriented. Eventually, I turned a corner and nearly crashed into a steward. I explained to him what had happened and we returned to my cabin. But upon opening the door again... There was no body to be found. Remarkable. I felt a fool. I had told the steward that there was a dead man in my room, but there was no one there. How did you know he was dead? Well, in hindsight, I, I guess I just assumed. I admit I did not dare take his pulse. Miss Morey, several questions immediately come to mind. But I think it prudent that we inform the ship's captain, and I would like to summon my companion, Dr. Watson. It's embarrassing, Mr. Holmes. Do we have to include the others? I can assure you, Miss Morey, that Dr. Watson is a man of the highest discretion. Further, I cannot assist you without informing the captain. It is a matter of jurisdiction. Please let us summon them.
is a great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I have read much of your adventures. You as well, Dr. Watson. The pleasure is mine, Captain Cirillo. Indeed. This is a first-class ship that you helm, Captain. This was Helena Mori's room, where she claims to have seen a dead body. Indeed. We have moved her to another cabin. Our steward, Papas, will transfer her belongings later. Very considerate, Captain. She was most distressed. We have left everything as we found it. As you can see, Mr. Holmes, there is no body. I do not know what to make of her story, but we will get to the bottom of it. I wonder, Captain Cirillo, if it would be advisable to review the manifest and assure that all the passengers are accounted for. <laughs> I am one step ahead of you, Mr. Holmes. My staff, Captain, is reviewing the manifest, even as we speak. Here is a copy of it. Very good. I wonder, Captain, if you would extend me the courtesy to check Helena Murray's room. Yes, yes, of course. I was counting on it. Put your detective skills to work. I just ask that you report back to me if you find anything out of order, and to leave any evidence in place should you find something. Rest assured. I leave it to you. I have other duties to attend to before we arrive in port in Malta tonight. Thank you, Captain. Well, Holmes, what do you make of it? I am beginning to wonder if Miss Morey is of sound mind. I would not be so quick to judgment, my good doctor. The woman seemed most sincere in her testimony. I think it wise that we investigate her story. Of course. Miss Morey described the man on the floor as middle-aged, roughly 14 stone, with tasseled ginger hair and rather unkempt beard. She said he was face down on the floor and was wearing a dinner jacket. She said she noticed scuff marks on his shoes and a wedding band on his left hand. Remarkable detail for someone who only saw the body in a flash before running to fetch help. But not altogether extraordinary. According to this manifest, Helena Mori is a writer, Canadian by birth. Uh, she boarded the ship in Gibraltar. It says here they are scholastic books. Uh, books that require attention to detail, my good doctor. I would not discount this woman's story based solely on her very exacting description of the scene. Still, if we are to place stock in her tale, we should find some sort of evidence that there was a body on the floor. <laughs> Which explains your magnify glass. My good doctor, would you be so kind as to turn the desk lamp towards me as I examine the floor. What are you looking for, Holmes? If there was a body here on the floor, one might rightly assume there would be evidence to support Miss Morey's story. A stray hair, a strand of fabric, a scuff mark. Hello, what have we here? What is it, Holmes? <laughs> It is irrefutable proof that the cleaning staff have not performed as thorough a job of sanitizing this cabin as one would hope. Oh? What do you mean? <sighs> there were several stray hairs of different colors, strands of fabric, and even an old tea stain on the floor. Without my proper laboratory instruments, I would be hard-pressed to know how long any of them would have been there. So, was there a body in this room or not? Inconclusive, old chum. We can neither prove or disprove there was a body here, based on the scant evidence. Or... Too much evidence. Precisely. Miss Morey is resting, but once she is feeling up to it, we shall bring her here to examine the room more carefully, to discover if anything is out of place. So what do we do in the meantime? Uh, we shall talk with the staff captain and see what his search has produced. See if any of the passengers are missing? Precisely. And if there is not, then I think it would be safe to assume Miss Morey has an imagination that has become unhinged. No, I don't think we can leap to that conclusion, my good doctor. There are other possibilities. Such as? Sherlock Holmes! Good day, sir. I am Staff Captain Elias. Captain Cirillo said you would be here. A pleasure to meet you, Mr. Elias. This is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Pleasure, sir. Good to meet you. Did your review of the ship's manifest shed any light on Miss Morey's claims? I'm afraid not, sir. Everyone is accounted for. As I suspected. Where is Miss Mori now? She is resting, sir. We gave her a vacant cabin. Our ship's nurse took her there and afforded her a mild sedative. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Elias. My pleasure, Mr. Holmes. Uh, there is one more thing, Mr. Holmes. I don't know if it means anything, but I thought I should mention it to you. What is it, Elias? The man Miss Murray described as being dead on her cabin floor. Yes. It really did not fit the description of any of our passengers. I looked carefully. There is no one on board with red hair of any shade, sir. Yet alone with a scruffy beard. You have a beard, Mr. Elias? I do. <laughs> Perhaps I was not concise. 
There was no one with red hair and a scruffy beard on board. There are three men with beards on this ship. One passenger and two crewmates. They're all, how shall I put it? <laughs> Trimmed and in order. But no one matching Miss Moray's description. Indeed. Perhaps she was confused. It is a shocking thing to see a dead body. I do not think that is what happened, my good doctor. And I hate to make matters worse for her, but her description of our steward Papas was also inaccurate. What do you mean? She said she nearly ran into our steward in the hall, and after finding the body, she described him as being tall and slender. And with a hint of an Irish accent, and Papas is short, dark features with a Greek accent, am I right? Yes. You've met him? Yes. Is there anyone who's part of the staff of the ship that is tall, slender, and Irish? Not at all, sir. And no one on the ship matches that description either? There are two gentlemen who are tall and slender, but they most certainly are not Irish. They're brothers from Italy, and they're 70 years of age if they are a day on a round-trip holiday. This is not holding well for Miss Moray. I do not wish to upset her further. No. You were right in telling us, Mr. Elias. Thank you. I bid you good day. What are we to make of this, Holmes? We are not yet stymied, Doctor. I think it would be beneficial for us to make our way to the top deck. Let us peruse the ship and see what might be learned with a closer inspection of the passengers. But Mr. Elias just gave us his report. It may be a futile exercise, but I'm not yet convinced there is not more than meets the eye with this bit of intrigue. <laughs> I suspect you will discover that Miss Moray, for whatever reason, created or imagined a dead body. I think something more sinister is afoot. <coughs> there, there are the two tall and slender brothers. Should we strike up a conversation? No, I cannot imagine there is anything to be gained from those two gentlemen. So why are we here? We are chasing a ghost. A patience, my good doctor. <coughs> good Lord, what is that? Someone is in distress. Quickly, Watson, to the starboard side. <coughs> let me through, let me through. I'm a doctor. What is it, madam? A body, a body in the water. <laughs> There's a body in the water. Holmes, she's fainted. We will continue with Act 2 of The Case of the Missing Body in just a moment. As a sincere thank you for tuning in to tonight's performance, our sponsor, Joshua Wall and the Crew Real Estate, would like to give you an opportunity to win a fabulous prize. To enter to win, visit thecrewrealestate.com backslash Sherlock. That's thecrewrealestate.com backslash Sherlock. Well, Dr. Watson, you certainly have my attention. A second person seeing a second body? Our thoughts exactly. We summoned the nurse and had the woman taken to the sick bay. Holmes and most of the people on the ship looked overboard to see if there was a body in the water. None was seen. Holmes took further steps to investigate the railing from one end of the ship to the other, but to no avail. Uh, Captain Cirillo, has your staff captain had a chance to check the ship's manifest again? He has indeed, and everyone is accounted for. The second person, Arthur Leah Whitburn. I saw the look on her face. She was in shock. I have no doubt she believed she saw a body. I concur. But no one else saw a body in the water. Come in. Captain, Elena Mori is awake. He wishes to speak with you and Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. The nurse is escorting her to her former cabin as requested. And Arthur Leah Whitburn? She is still resting. Uh, let us proceed to Mrs. Morey's cabin. Perhaps she can shed some light on what has happened. I have a feeling these two incidences are related. So, nothing seems to be missing or out of place, Miss Morey? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, describe what you saw when you walked into your cabin. The body was right there at the foot of the desk, Mr. Holmes. He was prostrate, with both of his arms flat against the side of his body. I was able to decipher that he had a significant beard and his hair was quite tussled. Frankly, now that I think about it, he looked rather posed. And he was wearing a dinner jacket. Yes, 
Dark navy coloured. And you say you ran out of the room and into the steward? Yes. I became confused by the hallways. I couldn't figure out which was the nearest staircase. As I went around a corner in the hallway, I nearly crashed into him. Uh, Mrs. Morey, if you don't mind, could you tell me again what the steward looked like? Well, he was tall, red-haired, quite gaunt and ashen. I believe he was Irish, although he really didn't say much. He was wearing a steward's uniform? Yes, and that's another thing. It certainly didn't fit him very well. The sleeves on his jacket were too short, and the hem on his pants was up to his ankles. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't? That was not the ship's steward, Pappas, and whoever this scoundrel was was not a member of your staff. But how do you know that? Elementary, my dear Captain. Mrs. Morey has described the steward as a tall, red-headed man with an Irish accent. Your steward, Pappas, is of shorter stature and decidedly not of Irish descent. Whoever met Mrs. Morey in the hall Way was certainly not your steward. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Morey, how much time passed between you discovering the body and running into the tall steward? I would estimate about a minute, maybe a bit more. That seems reasonable. I find the labyrinth of hallways a bit confusing, too. And you returned to your room with the steward? Yes, he led the way. We went there post-haste. We were nearly sprinting. You gave him your room number? I don't remember. I, I assume he recognized me and we hurried to my room. Uh, did he use his own keys or yours to open the door? Mine. Why is that relevant, Holmes? I can't be sure that it is, but it's just one more interesting detail. You think that someone threw the body of... Oh dear. I don't believe Mrs. Morey knows about Arthur Leah Whitburn. Who is she? Uh, Mrs. Morey, another passenger spotted a body. In their room? No, in the water off the starboard side of the ship. Sweet Lord. It would appear, Mrs. Morey, that you are not the only one to see a body. Was it the bearded man? We have no idea. Arthur Leia Whitburn fainted and is still resting. We hope to speak to her when she awakens. Perhaps, Mr. Holmes, I should check on her well-being. Mm, that would be much appreciated, Captain. We will follow shortly. Mrs. Morey, if I may beg your indulgence, I do have just two more questions for you. Please, Mr. Holmes, anything to clear up this horrible situation. Can you think of anyone who would want to terrify you in this way? Not a soul, Mr. Holmes. I live a very quiet life in Whitby. My husband, God rest his soul, passed away nearly ten years ago. I have a lovely group of friends, and I volunteer at St. Mary's Church. I helped with the renovation of Arcademan's Cross last year, and I think it turned out simply... An exemplary citizen, I have no doubt. Nor do I. Uh, my final question, my dear lady, is about the man's wedding ring. I am suitably impressed that you notice such a detail. Oh, I am no sleuth like the unmatchable Sherlock Holmes. I noticed it because it was obviously very new. A bright gold Band. So our victim is a newlywed, Holmes? I do not believe so. He wanted Mrs. Morey to notice the ring. Notice it? I, I'm not following. I am just beginning to piece together the story myself, old chum. Uh, let us escort you to your new room, Mrs. Morey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. But I think I will go for a stroll on the upper deck. The fresh air will be good for me. I personally was not able to obtain much information of value from Mrs. Whitburn, but you are more than welcome to chat with her now, Mr. Holmes. Apparently, she is an adoring fan. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, how long before we are in port? We should put into Malta right on schedule, at 1900 hours. That does not leave us much time, does it? I bid you a good evening. Much time for what, Holmes? Is there even a case to be solved? I believe there is, Watson. We're not even sure a crime has been committed. A crime has indeed been committed, but I'm beginning to think it is nothing so primitive as a murder. Let us see what Arthur Lear Whitburn can tell us. Come in. Uh, good evening. Excuse our intrusion. This is Dr. Watson, and I am sure... Oh, my. It is the unmatchable Sherlock Holmes. I recognised you immediately when I boarded the ship. 
It is an honour to meet you. Well, the honour is ours, Arthur Lear. Oh, please, call me Artie. Arthur Lear is so archaic. Duly noted. I suppose you've come to ask about the dead man floating in the water. Indeed. I'm beginning to wonder if my mind was playing a trick on me. The captain says no one else saw a body at all. And never mind what the captain said. Uh, what did you see? I was looking out over the water on the windward side of the ship. I find it very relaxing, and it's less crowded over there. I was following a seagull in the distance, floating along the horizon. I happened to look down, and there was an object in the water, very near the side of the ship. At first I thought it was a dolphin. It was bobbing in the water and seemed to move along with the ship, crashing through each wave in the same direction we were moving. And then suddenly, I realised it was a man. Can you tell us what he looked like? It was, as you can imagine, very hard to make out any details. The body would submerge and then appear again. When I realised what I was looking at, I began to scream. I believe that is when we came over to see what the commotion was. The moment I screamed, the body drifted out of the wake and seemed to disappear behind the ship. He vanished before anyone else saw him. Can you tell us what he was wearing? Wearing? I don't know if I recall. Wait, uh, wait, it was a dark jacket. I remember that now. A navy blue dinner jacket? Yes, it sounds ridiculous, I know, but I swear that was what I saw. Did the man have a beard and tousled red hair? Why, yes. Now that you say that, he did have a beard and a flash of red hair. I told the captain I couldn't remember what he looked like. But now that I've had a moment to think about it... It's quite all right. Frankly, not to be disrespectful, but he looked like washed-up flotsam. And thus your assumption that he was dead. Well, surely he was dead. He was being dragged through the wake of the ship. I would agree, Mr. Holmes. He was not waving or calling for help. Do you suppose it was the same man that Mrs. Morey saw? Perhaps someone threw the poor wretch overboard. Which would mean just one murder. But something is amiss. What is amiss is that in just over half an hour... We will be arriving in port, with an unsolved murder on our hands and a rather sour ending to our otherwise pleasant holiday. Uh, you say, Arthur Lear, that the body was... Please, Artie. Uh, of course. Uh, the body was moving with the ship at first, but when you screamed it drifted to the back of the ship. Yes. I believe we are being played for fools, my dear friends. No disrespect, my fine lady, but you are but a pawn in a devious and cruel game. I don't understand. Nor do I. Oh, we'll be well before we dock in Malta. Uh, quickly, Doctor, to the crew deck. Mr. Holmes, I can't stay down here with you. I have duties before we land in port. I understand, Mr. Elias. I only require a few minutes. Minutes I do not have, sir. You are not supposed to be here on the lower levels of the ship. It is quite dangerous. As you can see, the waves splash over the edge. One wayward wave and either you or Dr. Watson could be washed out to sea. How closely is the crew level watch during the voyage? Not at all, sir. Passengers are forbidden to be down here, and any crew member with half a sense stays clear of this area. There is a reason the floor is painted in the red. I would agree, Holmes. This feels rather precarious. And those ropes over there, how long are they? They are hundreds of feet in length. And they are located at both the bow and stern of the ship? Yes, of course. Port and starboard side as well. They are in fact longer than the ship itself? Yes. That would be true. It feels implausible, but it might just be that... What, Holmes? I must leave you, gentlemen. And remember, you came down here of your own volition. Your name will never be mentioned, Mr. Elias. Uh, thank you. You need to be back on the departure deck in seven minutes. Wait, Scott Holmes. What are we doing in the bowels of this ship? We're looking for clues, my good doctor. Now nearing port, Holmes. What clues are we looking for? Evidence that a man purposely entered the water clinging to a rope to be dragged along the side of the ship and then slide to the stern of the boat only to climb back on board around here somewhere. That doesn't sound possible, Holmes. The risk would be monumental. He simply ran to the front of the ship and pulled the rope back on board afterwards. Holmes, if this is true, then you are, as both of the ladies said, unmatchable. Just doesn't seem feasible. The man in the blue jacket first lay on Miss Morey's floor, and then in the water for Artie to see. 
he would have also been the fake steward. Why? Why terrorize these two women? Why all the charade? Why does no one of his description show up in the manifest? Is he a stowaway? A ghost? No, Watson. What a fool. What a fool! He is a showman. Showman? Let us return to the upper deck, Watson. I thought we were looking for clues. The unmatchable Sherlock Holmes has been matched. Oh, I am more lost than ever. You go to your cabin. I just need to stop to talk to the captain for a moment. Oh, there you are. The ship is docked. The passengers will be unloading in a few minutes. Holmes, there was a box at our door. I put it on the table. The final scene in the charade, my good doctor. Did you open it? Of course not. It was addressed to you. A neatly folded blue dinner jacket and a gold ring. So the man was real? And on the ship? No, he never was, Watson. Look at the jacket. It is brand new. It has never been dragged through the ocean. It has never been worn. And it is my size, Watson. Hmm, a note in the pocket. A note? Remember, no matter where you are, I can reach you. That is terribly ominous. What does it mean? A moment of patience, my friend. Let us go to the departure level. We are going to see the passengers off and know what it feels like to have a Pyrrhic victory. Win the battle? Lose the war? Exactly. <laughs> we be getting ready to depart? There is no rush, Watson. We are about to witness my unmatchable skills being matched. What are we watching for? Miss Maury and Arthur Leia Whitburn departing the ship side by side, doubtlessly walking directly to that man on shore standing beside that pillar. Why would they depart together? We have been bested by two actresses and a mastermind of torment. My vanity clouded my mind. When two strangers refer to you as the unmatchable Sherlock Holmes... I should have known I was being toyed with as cat with a mouse. And who was the man on shore? He is wearing a rather large hat. I can't tell from here. The clue is cryptic, Watson. Miss Mori, Artie Whitburn. Moriarty. Moriarty? It can't be. He is in prison, is he not? Obviously not. I am sure that upon investigation we will find that Helena Mori and Arthur Lea Whitburn as pseudonyms created for this ruse. Good lord. They made up the stories. There are no bodies in staterooms or floating in the ocean. There was no fake Irish steward wearing pants that were too short. All the crew of this vessel are from Greece. We have fed enough clues to pique our interest and we followed along with great eagerness, running from deck to deck chasing after a murder that never occurred. Moriarty was never on the ship? He has been here, in Malta, waiting to savour our unravelling, knowing the word would spread about how we were bested while cruising the Mediterranean, a case we could not solve. Here comes Helena Mori and Arthur Leah Whitburn now, just as you said, striding side by side looking no worse for the terror they suffered aboard the Augusta Victoria. And you? You are right, Holmes. They are walking towards the man in the hat beside the pillar. Well, aren't you going to yell out to him and, and let him know you are onto his hoax? I believe Mr. Holmes is going to leave that to the Malta police. Captain Sorillo? I wired Commander Clement La Prima Day with the Malta police, as you requested, Mr. Holmes. All three of them will be arrested when they walk through the exit gate. But what is the charge? Nothing worth the torment they have caused me, Dr. Watson. As I said, we have won the battle, but this time, Moriarty has won the war. So the sinister James Moriarty has reappeared? The Malta police were not able to hold him and he slinked into the shadows immediately. Our two actresses were charged for false documentation, but were simply returned to Canada. I can see why this case has you upset. Holmes solved the mystery, but at what cost? He knows Moriarty was able to best him. Remember, no matter where you are, I can reach you. We have no doubt that we shall encounter him again, and the next time it may involve a real murder. 
Tonight's production of Sherlock Holmes in The Case of the Missing Body was brought to you by Joshua Wall of The Crew Real Estate. Are you or someone you know looking to buy or invest in real estate? If so, better call the wall. The Case of the Missing Body is an Ichthys Theater production written and directed by Martin Smith, recorded by Rob Kerwain at the Light 92 Studios in Brantford. Music by Stuart Smith, featuring Sean Houck as Sherlock Holmes, Bruce Farley as Dr. Watson, Matthew Simmons as Captain Cirillo, Catherine Camp Painter as Helena, Catherine Taylor as Arthelia, Joe Gull as Elias, and I'm your announcer, Rob Kerwain. Please consider donating to Ichthys Theatre Productions with our GoFundMe campaign. Visit GoFundMe.com and search for Ichthys Theatre Productions, or visit our Facebook page for the link. You'll also find the link below in the description of this production on YouTube. All donations are greatly appreciated. Join us soon for our next production, Sherlock Holmes in The Kidnapping at Fernie Junction. Watch our Facebook page for full details.